G'day, my name is Joseph Kirkcroft from Professional CAD Systems. We're the New Zealand distributors for Creaforms 3D Scanners. So today we're going to show you the new GoScan Spark by Creaform. So a few key features is it can capture texture images at either 50 dpi up to 250 dpi. Its accuracy is 50 micron and it has a volumetric accuracy of up to 150 micron per meter. So we're going to um, get started with VX Elements. This is the software that comes with the scanner and it acquires all the data. And I'm just going to tilt the camera down so you can see the part and just make sure that we can see that nice and clearly. Okay, so the first things I like to do when getting started with a scan is um, think about what sort of resolution I need to capture the part well. So we've got a lot of fine features and a lot of details, so we probably want to use quite a, a low, or sorry, a high resolution, which would mean a low value. So if I go to like maybe 0.6 for example, um, we also want to capture the colour, so I'm going to hit apply. Then we can zoom down here and go to automatic projection and we can increase the texture quality size up to 8 megapixel. The highest we can go is 16 megabytes, sorry, 16 megapixel. Um, we could select auto decimate, so it automatically make bigger triangles in the larger surface areas while keeping smaller triangles on the high detailed areas. Uh, next, what we can do is um, go over to the right here and we can think about like what sort of um, positioning model do we want to use. Do we want to rely solely on positioning targets? Do we want to use targets as well as geometry um, to track where this is in space? Because this is quite a detailed part. It will lock on really nicely with, with the geometry that it has. If you have flat surface areas, I'd suggest using targets to help track um, a lot easier. And lastly, you have the option for targets, geometry, and texture. If you are scanning for example, say a person, you would select semi-rigid object because it's kind of got maybe a little bit of movement in it. Okay, so after selecting those settings, I would next look at configuration. So if I click on configuration, you can see it will go into a different menu. Undersaturated is gray um, or underexposed. Optimal will be yellow and oversaturated will be red or saturated. So if I point and shoot, at my part, I'm getting a lot of yellow, which is good optimal data. Um, I can change the shutter speed if I need to for like darker surfaces, or I can use auto adjust if I want the software to just figure it out for me. Okay, so once you've um, created your settings, we can now get started. So I'm going to click on the start scan button, and we just grab the scanner. And on the side here, you can see we've got three buttons. Um, the first two is zoom in and out, and the bigger button is the getting started. So I just tap that, and then it'll start to capture the part. So we just wave over it, kind of like digital spray painting, and we'll start to capture all the data that we want. So we can use the Lazy Susan in conjunction with um, scanning the part or just waving it over it. So the lower the resolution you use, the, the faster the scan will be. Since I'm using um, or capturing the data at quite a high resolution, um, this takes a little bit longer, but you're going to get a far higher detailed part. So just a bit more time to pick up all the texture detail. So what I'm looking for is just filling in the dark areas now. I'm quite happy with that. I'm sure I can get underneath the chin as well. Okay, so that's pretty good. Actually, I saw a little bit there floating. 
to capture everything that we want to capture. So you can start and stop and resume as much as you like. So now at this point here, I want to turn over the part. So what I can do is I can click on stop scan. I can then um, get the lasso tool and make sure that the targets are selected and select through is selected. Because what I want to do is I want to delete those targets so I can reuse them again. So I can just go like that. And I can select the bottom target there as well. So I'm just saying to the software that I don't want those targets, so I'm going to delete those. Then I can turn the part over. So this is happening all in real time. Um, I'm just turning off the target select, and then I can go to connect all select, select everything that's connected to itself. So that whole piece is one connected piece. I can then inverse the selection and delete what I don't want. So essentially I've taken away all the data apart from what I want to keep, and I deleted the targets on the Lazy Susan, so I could reuse those targets. So now when I go to scan again, I just can point it at some common um, geometry or common targets, which would be at the base of the scan, of the part I mean. It automatically knows where it is, then I can continue on and capture the rest of the model. Slowly go around and get it from all angles. So you can see the distance meter on, on the part. It will show you if you're too close with red lines, too far away with blue. So it's quite helpful as a visual aid to know just how close you are to the part. All right, so it should almost be done. So at any time you could just spin around and, and have a look and see if you've missed anywhere. Just pick up the mouse and just have a look and see if there's any holes that you would like to get. So there's a little bit of noise or um, floating data, but that's not a problem. So once you're happy, you would then press stop again on the scan. Okay, then we can click on the uh, connect button again and then control click on the part that you want to keep. And you can see that it's not even connected to the table, so I can reverse the selection and then hit delete. Okay, so now that we have our, our finished model, just turn off the, the targets. Um, we can now finalize what we've done. So to finalize, we click on the finalize button. And now it's just going to process all the information that we have, uh, reduce the noise, decimate the part, and give us our end mesh result.
So you can see the iterations that it's going through. It's doing the cleaning of the mesh, um, finalizing the scan, mapping the texture now. So a lot of other scanning systems, this can take quite a long time. But with um, Creoform's um, scanners, we can do a lot of basically like the post-processing um, right here and now. So it's doing all that calculation for you. Um, and then the end result is basically a complete mesh. So we don't necessarily have to scan multiple um, scans or create multiple scans that we merge together later. We can do it all in one go and get a single mesh output. The great thing about um, Creoform's technology as well, even though we scan that at 0.6 of a millimeter resolution, it's captured all the raw data. So after we finish the scan, if we wanted to, we could increase that resolution even further or decrease the resolution. So it's really intuitive um, software to be able to capture all that raw information and then output um, whatever mesh resolution mesh we want. Okay, so here's the, the finished result. So we've got a little bit of um, noise floating in the background. That won't get exported with the mesh. It's just showing um, just bits and pieces floating out there. If we go now to File, Export Mesh, you can directly export that, um, that mesh to OBJ. If you wanted to um, do an alignment, we could go to Basic Alignment and then select uh, Align to Origin. And it will do an automatic alignment based on the geometry of the part. Um, so that you can export that to, again, OBJ. So I just wanted to show you uh, VX model and how we can finalize this model even further. So if I go to center VX model, you can see um, it produces a mesh that's within inside of the VX model here on the left. So if I turn off the scan, we've got just the mesh only. So I can now um, hold control and click on the part that I want to keep inverse the selection again and just delete those fragments of data that are floating around and you can see it actually took away the texture which is fine um, we don't need it for right now but it is quite nice that it did take it away because then i can just show you um, the level of detail that we've captured and if we go to the display settings and then go to triangles and wireframe you can see it's got a very nice uniform structured mesh so the triangles are, are very clean very tidy and we always get a very nice result with a lot of detail. So I'm going to now click on um, the hole filling tool and just see how many holes there are. There is literally one hole and the only hole that there is, is at the bottom here. So you can see it captured it in very, very good detail. I can click on that hole and now I have a completely solid model. So if we right click on the mesh and select inspect mesh sorry properties you can see it's now watertight it's a watertight mesh that's 3d printable so to align this part to an, a coordinate system i could click on the plane tool and then click on the bottom surface and create a plane and i might just flip the normal of the plane upwards so flip the normal upwards Next, I could get the uh, cylinder tool and I could just click on here to grab that. Um, and I'm gonna grab a little bit more cylinder information at the back because I can use that as, um, as an alignment feature as well. So I can click on create and close that. So now what I can do is go to align to origin, select the plane as X and Y and you can see that it's now aligned that. I can now set the um, cylinder as my Z axis. And then the last um, rotation is this one here, and this one doesn't matter too much. I can just go to a top view and zoom in a little bit, and just I want to point my um, statue's face going forwards and then click align. All right, so that's the result that we've got. Now I can go back to the scan and I need to apply the same alignment to that scan so it will project the texture back onto my mesh correctly. 
So go to Apply Alignment, drop down and choose the same alignment from Mesh 1. So now it's overlaid the scan over top of my mesh. I can turn off Scan 1 and my entities and you can see that I have just my mesh left afterwards. And then I can just click on Reapply of the texture so that we can um, basically remap it with the texture that was stripped when we filled in the hole and deleted the noise. So again, this is all real time. I'm not speeding up the recording to show you how, you know, a, a demo that's um, basically yeah, misleading you. We're just showing you that we can capture this very quickly and easily and the software does a lot of the, the stitching and um, processing for you. So VX model um, is a software module that works inside of VX Elements. Um, if you have uh, object editing tools already that can edit uh, a mesh and texture, then you won't need VX model, but it is um, an optional feature. So we'll just let that go through and process. There's a lot more um, tools in VX model that we haven't explored. Um, we can do things like mirror, we can cut using planes, we can remesh a surface if we want to. Um, we can decimate, we can smooth, we can create entities as well. So here's the end result. And it looks just as good as the scan before. But this time we know there's no holes, there's no nothing wrong with the mesh at all. We can now go and export that. So we can go right click and export mesh. And if we just Chuck it onto the desktop for now. We can go um, 3D scan, demo, go scan spark. So thanks for your time today. Um, if you want to learn more about the go scan spark, please visit our website which is procadsys.co.nz and if you go to products then go to the GoScan 3D scanner we have a lot more information on the specs of the scanner and um, if you want a quote just feel free to fill in the quote form at the bottom of the page thank you